twilight, these sisters discuss the paranormal and the unnerving. They are known as the Parasisters. Hi guys, this is Tristan. And this is Rebecca. And you are listening and watching the Parasisters. Yes, you are. And we're awesome, so you should keep doing that. Um, For real, seriously. A couple things of business. Uh, You guys should check check us out. We're now on podcasts. You can get us on Spotify, Pocket Cast, um, Overcast, Google, a whole list of podcasts. I think we're almost on, like, every podcast like platform there is so you guys should come check out check out our new episodes on there for real and we're on like i've not even heard of most of those podcasts <laughs> i haven't either but we're there it's cool we're there yeah. um also you guys like share subscribe hit the notification bell and uh follow us on twitter instagram and facebook um our links are always posted in our description So I'm just going to jump right in and I'm going to get it started because this is going to be a little long one, I think. Is this going to freak me out right before I go to bed? It it (laughs) is in a way. um, I wouldn't classify it as a paranormal happening or even a phenomena, but it is weird nonetheless. I like weird. weird. I got to be honest. (laughs) So... We are going to talk about Skidmore, Missouri, the creepiest town ever. Yeah, I've never heard of this town ever. I have I've actually heard one of the stories that happened in this town, but I didn't know that it was this town and I didn't know that there was more. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. So, uh the Skidmore area was settled in 1840 by William Bunton. Uh, shortly after the plat purchase, which I had to open this up. It, so uh, shortly after the plat purchase opened the area for settlement, the plat purchase was um, a land acquisition in 1936 by the U.S. government from Native American tribes. Oh. Okay. So they, yeah, they, they pretty much bought, they bought Missouri from the Native Americans. Okay, we stole their land. Well, not we personally, but they stole their land. Well, this like was government. actually, this was actually a purchase. They actually purchased it. They bought it. They gave them money for it. So it wasn't like a thievery stealing type thing. They actually gave them money for the land itself. Do you know how much they paid for it or no? <laughs> it, I didn't read enough by, about it. I just looked it up to see exactly what it was. I was just wondering, you know, I like dollar figures. <laughs> I know you do. So I... I didn't read that much into it because it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with what goes on. Well, I mean, actually it might, but it, I don't know. It doesn't, it's to my, to my state of mind, it didn't have a whole lot to do with this town in general. Gotcha. So um, Skidmore itself was platted in 1880 when M. Skidmore, which I cannot find anything about him, donated 20 acres to a railroad company that no longer exists. So I didn't even delve further into that because I don't give a shit. It doesn't even exist anymore. (laughs) (laughs) So um, Skidmore is located, and I hope I pronounce this right, Nottoway County, Missouri. Um, Its current population is around 250 people. Um, At the time of the first event, it was only like 278 people (laughs) population. So not a yeah, lot of people um, live there. It's like a tiny town. Right. It's a very small town. Yeah. Um, I actually was reading an article by this writer, and he said it's not so much the population of a town as it is the population of a large shopping mall. <laughs> yes. That's excellent. So I was like, I really like that. Uh, reports say that people and businesses um, still continue to leave on the account that no one wants to live here. Nobody wants to live here. Ooh. And the pictures that I saw of this place, it's very desolate and very just, very depressing looking, this town is. Um, The crime rate is extremely high. And I actually, 
the article I was reading that first got me into this subject uh, said that the that it really wasn't that high. So I went and looked it up, and I looked it up on um, City Vibes, uh-huh. which gives the FBI statistics. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I've been on that uh, website. Yeah. Uh, so they give the FBI statistics. So the crime rate is actually extremely high for this county in general. Uh, total crime rate is 92% above national average. Holy crap. Yeah. Violent crimes is 108 percent above national Jeez. average and property crimes is 90 percent above national average that's crazy yeah like there's like so then i was 50 people there right well it's even in the whole county there's only like thirty thousand people in the whole not county that's crazy i know um and a lot of the crime, the a lot of the crime here is strange, mysterious, and very disturbing. Actually, what is it a cult? Uh, no, it's not. Satanic it's a, just rituals. It's weird. Okay, so the town's notoriety began with the murder of Ken Rex McElroy. So now, Mr. Ken Rex McElroy was a douchebag. I'm just gonna okay. put it out there to begin with. His name is extremely hilarious, also. Well, from here on out, we're just gonna call him Ken. <laughs> Ken the douche. Okay. Ken the du- yeah, Ken the, the douche. Yeah. If I can learn how to speak today. Yeah, well. <laughs> so um, he was a resident. He was born in on uh, June 11th, 1934. He was a resident of Skidmore. Um, he was known as the town bully. Oh. But it was actually way more than that. Uh, he was accused of dozens of felonies, including assault, molestation, statutory rape, arson, cattle theft, and burglary. What? Yeah. Cattle and during theft? the 60s. 60... Yeah, he was a cattle rustler. He stole the yeah. cow. You damn thing. Yeah. He took her from me. Sorry, got a little um, twist in a. <laughs> This guy was a, I mean, he was a royal douche. I'm not even joking. I mean, he was like shit of the earth douche. Yeah. <laughs> like, so during, uh, this is up um, from an article by Mike Moran. Um, it says during the 60s and the 70s, he was like a dicto- uh, self-imposed dictator. Of the uh, town? Who's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who rounds who ran Skidmore like his personal kingdom, literally raping and pillaging for two decades. And nobody stopped him? No. Uh, this is what's crazy. Yeah. So we'll get into that. So he assaulted anyone he wanted to, um, stole from local farmers, hurt people in all kinds of ways. Um, if he found a woman or a girl, girls as young as 12, attractive, he would well, take them. And add them to his family of multiple wives and over a dozen children. What? Yeah. He just kidnapped and, people and made them marry him? Yes. You'll find out why this, this continued to happen for two, for 20 years. Um, so he was indicted 21 times for his <laughs> crimes. And 20 of those times he escaped conviction. Because he would strong arm anybody. Um, he would strong arm anyone who dared to press charges on him. Uh, he would launch intense harassment campaigns by stalking them, uh, shooting them, killing their pets, burning down their places. What? Just beating them up. Yeah. Like, even the police in this town feared him. He was so bad. Yeah. yeah, this guy was awful. I think I'd accidentally run him over one day. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah. Oh, it gets interesting. So this guy was a whole bag of dicks. Yeah. Until, until July tenth, nineteen eighty one. Um, on his so we're gonna go back just a little bit. Um, on his twenty first indictment, he was actually convicted. Um. In a nine, uh, in a 1980 shooting of a 70 year old grocer, um, he shoots him in the neck and seriously injures him. Uh, he didn't die, 
Uh, he didn't die, but his name was Ernest Bo Bowen Camp. Um, and people just called him Bo. Uh, so he actually was indicted for this. Um, but he successfully appeals the conviction and was released on bond. Oh, Lord. I know this guy. The He's American like, justice system, people. <laughs> right. Well, um, in the article that I read, it said that his attorney was mob connected. Oh, great. Yeah. So his attorney was mob connected and by like, you know, by proxy, he was mob connected because his attorney was. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it makes more sense, I guess. Plus, he was just a dick. And, like, harass these people until they end up dropping the charges on him. Um, so he gets out on bond, right? And he starts harassing this poor seven-year-old Bo. And anyone who was sympathetic to Bo, including a church minister. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, so in his harassment campaign, he goes to the local bar armed with a rifle and a bayonet. And threatens to kill Bo at this bar. And like in front of people I guess multiple... and nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> like... Right. Well, because everybody's afraid to stand up to him. Well, they right? got guns too, don't they? <laughs> well, so he threatens to kill Bo, right? Well, the day after this happens at the bar, um, he's sitting in his truck with his wife on on Skidmore's Main Street, just sitting in his truck, right? In broad daylight, when a crowd of people surround his truck, and he is shot to death. Yes. That's what I said. I was like, justice. That's, that's some vigilante <laughs> um, style there. <laughs> very much vigilante. He was struck with two bullets from two different guns. Cool. Yes. Um, there was 30 to 50 people who witnessed this. And no one said shit nobody that's the way it should be yeah and no one has ever been charged with his murder ever great yeah and in a separate article that i read um which i didn't really get a whole lot of information from so i didn't know where the article who wrote the article um it said that uh if you question anybody in skidmore about this even to this day they will say um either i wasn't there or I don't know anything. Those are the only two answers you get if you question anybody who's been a resident of Skidmore for any period of time. That's awesome. Yeah. So they like really stuck together and got rid of this ass hat. Freaking this guy. <laughs> the ass hat. <laughs> He's a satchel full of Richards. So, but this case is what brought Skidmore into the limelight to begin with. The news mm -hmm. limelight. Because, I mean, it was a murder that happened in broad daylight and nobody says anything about it. Right. So it kind of, of course, it was in the news for quite a while, you know. But then everything kind of dies down. And for the next 30 or I'm sorry, for the next 20 years, things are real quiet. But people start leaving town and businesses shut down. You know, they're kind of done with all this nonsense here. Yeah. But in 2000, Skidmore is news popular again. Um, a woman named Wendy Gillenwater is brutally murdered by her boyfriend. Uh, the accounts are varied on exactly what happened. Uh, some say that he had stomped her to death. What? Um, yeah, can like you, just can stomped. You do that to I guess so. It's not funny. I don't know. I just can't even imagine that, honestly. <laughs> well, yeah, it's completely awful. But the second part, the other account, and it's it seems like this is the more believable or the more, like, people are really onto this account more than the other one. Right. Uh, the Another account is that he actually dragged her behind his car through town, like, back roads in the town. Until she died. I feel like I've heard of that before. That's crazy. Yeah. So it's either one account or the other. Uh, but either way, she was in, she ended up, they found her in front of her house and she had had to pass. 
Um, her killer, which I will not give him any notoriety at all, is serving life in jail as we speak. Why did he do it? So, and, and nobody knows why. He has never said why. Because he's a douche. Why. Like, seriously. So, I'm going to pause right here, and I'm just going to tell you, there are more accounts. This town, I have, okay, so I have looked up, like, I did look up if there was haunting and stuff like that in this town. Um, and, I, of course, there's hauntings, like, reported heart hauntings of places and stuff like that, you know? Of course. Um, but I got onto some message boards, and a lot of messages... Um, because I like to read the message boards for haunting stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of people who post things on there, it just says, do not go there. It is evil. Like, don't even visit there? Don't even visit there. Like, and there are reports that the GPSs and stuff don't even work there. Dude, and you lose cell, uh, cell phone signal. I kind of want to go there. <laughs> just to see. Just for like a half a day. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even course, know, man. Of course, my luck, I'd get stranded there and, and get murdered or something. <laughs> I think you're okay as long as you're not a Ken Rex Mick Elroy. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but a lot of the message boards, they just say, do not go there. It is evil. That's crazy. So I think it's just known as a bad place. Um, so then in April 11, 2001... Branson Perry, a 20-year-old boy, vanishes into thin air while working um, at his father's house. His father is in the hospital, and he's just trying to clean up the house for when he gets home. Right. Um, you know, just to help his dad out from when he gets home from the hospital. He had an illness. Um, so while cleaning up the house, he walks from the house out into the backyard to put a pair of jumper cables away in the shed outside. From the house to the shed, he disappears. Now, I would be like, oh, well, maybe he just ran away. But he had a friend there helping him. Yeah. And she was in the house. And there were two men in the driveway working on his dad's car. And he, he like, disappeared? Like, they didn't see him? Vanished into thin air. Gone. From the back door... Between the back door and the shed, just vanishes. Yeah, Are no one tripping? saw him leave the property. <laughs> right, no one saw him leave the property. Uh, they didn't see any foul play, like abduction. I mean, but he was in the backyard, you know. Yeah. And there's three people there. Right. Three other people. Nobody saw anything. What? Yeah. What is blowing so, my mind. Yeah, he was just simply gone. Just gone. It's weird, right? So no clues were found. Uh, not even the jumper cables were found until two weeks later when they suddenly appeared on the property in plain sight. Right. Like where they had, not, they had not been there. Obviously, they would have seen them if they were like... Right. Right. It's kind of like his dad came home one day and they're sitting on the porch and he's like, oh, shit, there's the jumper cables. But where's Branson? Yeah. That's crazy. Right? Isn't that I'm weird? Like, why would he run away if he was, like, fixing the house, like, getting the house ready for his dad to come home, you know? Right, and that's my thought, because there are some theories, right? But we'll get into those in a second. Um, uh, so the whole town gets together and searches for, searches for him. They find nothing. They can't find any clues of where he went or anything like that, right? And, of course, there are many theories. Uh, one has to do with drugs because his friend that was there with him, with him said that they had dabbled. Not that they were heavy into drugs or anything like that, but they had dabbled. And she thought maybe some um, drug people had gotten to him or something, you know. But there was no evidence of any kind of foul play or well, anything. Why would she even uh, think that if, by her own admission, they had only dabbled? I'm like, you don't have drug dealers coming after you if you're just a dabbler. I think at this point, they were just kind of like anything. You know what I mean? Well, they were just like, throwing shit out there and seeing what sticks. <laughs> like, go for yeah, it. Yeah, throwing shit at the wall yeah, and seeing what sticks. Yeah, that's kind of what it was. 
Although he did say that um, his father did say that a few weeks before he had disappeared, which this is, it makes sense to me, but then it doesn't make sense to me because like you just said, why would he be cleaning up his father's house and just disappear? I don't know. Um, His father says that a few weeks before he had disappeared, he was drugged and assaulted by a neighbor. Like given drugs and then assaulted? Yes. uh, By a neighbor. Yeah. Um, what the hell and kind of it, town is this? Uh, an evil one, I'm telling you. It's like Satan. Uh, oh, it gets, <laughs> it gets worse. Um, so, it, of course, this left Branson angry and humiliated, and his, and his father said that he wanted to leave the town. But why wouldn't he say bye to his father? You know what well, I mean? If he I, told his father that he wanted to leave, <clears throat> I think he would have said, I'm leaving. Sorry. Right, and why would he just disappear in the middle of cleaning up his house and doing something helpful well, towards right. that? I would think, I would think that somebody would who is a grown man at twenty and is doing something helpful for his dad because he loves him would at least say bye. Yeah, I'm like, if he, it would be different if he hadn't have said, "I'm thinking of leaving." Like, it, right? Because if people disappear, they generally don't tell other people they're disappearing. You know? <laughs> like, right, right. And and I think that he would want his dad to know that he was okay, you well, know. Right. But still, to this day, I mean, this happened in 2001. They don't have any idea what the hell happened. He's just gone. Never turned up, ever. I mean, they had what? clues of, of, like, people said, well, I I saw somebody do this, and they would go check it out, and it, there would, it would end up being nothing. You know what I mean? What? So, Right. The theory with the most credence is one where a corrupt minister that was actually arrested in 2003 um, because he tried to perform a botched sex change surgery on somebody in a hotel room. I'm sorry, was this a doctor or a pastor? A minister. Oh, jeez. He's like, I'm going for it. Why? Why? I don't know. Um, so when they arrested him, of course, they checked his computer in his house and stuff. And he had horrible things on his computer that has to do with children. And I don't like to mention that stuff. I'm sorry. Did he try to do um, the operation on himself? No, on somebody else. Like they were willing or was it like? Yes. Yes, they were willing. But he like messed it up and the ambulance had to be called. Of course, he messed it up. And the ambulance had to be called and he got arrested for trying to perform this surgery that he is obviously <laughs> not equipped to perform or this, educated this enough. This is too much for me. I can't even. <laughs> I, I'm like, what a dumbass, oh, right? <laughs> so um, <laughs> along with this bad stuff on his computer, he has gra- a graphic med- uh, message board. Post involving uh, sadistic stories of extreme sexual assaults. Oh, gosh. And uh, one of them involves a young male hitchhiker whose description in the story matches Branson's perfectly. And he wrote it? Yeah, he wrote it. He wrote the story. Oh, man. He did it, didn't he? I don't know. I know. They also found a necklace in uh, this douchebag's home. That resembles one that was owned by Branson. Yeah, he did. Um, so at this point, uh, so the minister's already in jail, right? Which I didn't write down his name because I don't think he deserves any kind of no. mentioning because he is a disgusting monster. Uh, so, but the minister was never charged with anything in connection with Branson Perry. Of course. They, of course, just couldn't find enough evidence. Yeah. So, um, that brings us to the cousin of Branson Perry, uh, December 16, 2004. Uh, her name is Bobby Jo Stinnett, and she is found on December 16th by her mother, who calls 911 and tells the operator that her stomach looked like it exploded. What? Yeah. It's like dream catcher shit going on. I know. I know. Uh, Bobby Joe was pronounced uh, 
DOA when the ambulance arrived. She was dead on the scene. Uh, the reason that her stomach looked like that was because her unba- unborn baby was cut out of her and stolen. By who? We're going to get to that. Holy <laughs> shit. By a woman named Lisa M. Montgomery. Um, just so I'm not holding anybody in suspense, this baby was found alive two days later and was returned to the custody of her father. That's good, at least. (laughs) Yes. Just so nobody's like, what happened to the baby? She is fine, and she's actually currently living. And she's healthy. (laughs) Um, So Lisa met... Oh, and and the baby's name is Victoria, which I thought was beautiful. I really like that I just like that name. I I do, too. (laughs) So um, I I just like it because it's like victory you know like you try to do awful things and i'm victorious and i'm here you know um so lisa montgomery actually met bobby jost in it through um an online like some kind of online thing because bobby joe was a dog breeder so uh, i've heard of this person i think i've heard of this story yeah i don't know any of the names but it sounds super familiar so um they meet through the through online uh and um lisa montgomery befriends her uh saying that she wants to purchase a puppy from her you know so she comes over bobby joe welcomes her into the house to look at the puppies and lisa begins to strangle her until she goes limp right then after she goes limp she proceeds to cut the baby out and steals her oh jeez yeah awful so freaking awful uh, you know what i have watched a movie on lifetime that was like that maybe that's what i don't know i don't know i that i don't know it just sounds so familiar i feel like i heard a story where a lady stole another person's baby she cut her open, took the baby, but I, they met like online through su- for some reason. It, it just sounds so familiar, like right. Well, okay, so there is a, a movie about this, just so everybody the, knows. There is a town? movie, this town, there is a book, it's called In Broad Daylight. Um, I on the last page, I actually wrote down the author in case anybody wants to read it. It's called In Broad Daylight. Um, I have, I heard it's a pretty good read from the reviews. So, interesting. Um, so interesting enough, uh, Lisa Montgomery is the third woman in American history that is scheduled to be executed by the federal government. Thank God. Yes, because she deserves it. That's terrible. Um, I hear our theme music playing. Dude, I do too. I think Dustin's watching one of our videos. Sassy's watching our video. God, it got me creeped out for a second. I was like, dang, we're going to need to change that. It's possessed. Okay, so there is so much. There's so much stuff in this town, right? Those are the biggest cases that really got a lot of spotlight going on them. Um, although that those are the most recent this county has a long-standing tradition of violent and disturbing crimes. Sounds like a yes. fun place to be. Going all the way back to 1880, when it was first plated. Like, when the first settlers were there, um, we have, in 1880, the Talbot brothers were hanged for killing their father. Yeah, uh, in 1910, uh, Hez Roscoe, which is a weird name. His name is really Hez. H-E-Z. It was weird. That's crazy. I was like, is that, is that Hez or He's? I don't know. I wonder if his name is like uh, Ezekiel. No, it says Hez. Like, that is his full name. Hez Roscoe. That's weird. <laughs> hey, Hez. Yeah. Um, killed a family of four and burned their house with their bodies inside for what? no apparent reason. There was no reason. Did it, he didn't, he like, didn't rob have them dis- or anything? No, he didn't have a disagreement with oh, them. Lord. He didn't He didn't even know them. They were strangers to him. 
yeah, freaking weird, right? No apparent reason. In uh, 1974, Benny Kemper, which I just have to say that that is two Kempers now that are freaking weird as hell. Yes. Yeah, Ed Kemper and now Benny Kemper. Yeah. Uh, so Benny Kemper in 1974 does something very similar to um, the Hez Roscoe or Roscoe guy. Um, he slaughters four out of five members of the Merrigan family for no reason. He doesn't know them. They don't know him. And he just goes in their house and kills them. What happened to the fifth person? They weren't there? I, I don't think they were there. It didn't go into a lot of detail on the case. This was kind of just like like an, like an a before story. Holy crap, man. Yeah. Um, in 1994, William Ta- Taylor lured his wife, Deborah, to her death by telling her that the family cat was under the family's farm combine oh, geez. and i don't know if so i'm assuming you know what a combine is i don't yeah. know if a lot of people know what a combine is but it's this huge piece of machinery that pulls up the hay and stuff um so he lures her out there and says that the cat is under there and asks her if she can get in there and get it well when she went, goes to get the cat he runs her over with a combine why what the f man i don't know and then he makes it, and then he, and then he tries to make it look like it was an accident, and it was a faulty combine. <laughs> well, that doesn't really yeah. explain why she was under the combine. <laughs> exactly, and I think that's how they caught him. They're like, uh, oh, "But why was she under there to begin with? Yeah, what was she doing? <laughs> right? Why was it running if it was faulty? You know, <gasps> oh, weird things. God. Okay. Yeah." yeah. Um, The oldest spree killer in American history, uh, Lloyd Jeffress, who at 71 fired at members of Conception Abbey Monastery, uh, killing a monk and a priest and injuring a number of other people. Um, All the victims were in their 60s and 70s. Um, He had nothing to do with this organization and the people were strangers to him. What? He was not a member of this congregation. He was not a member of this organization. He had never been involved in this monastery. He, nothing. He just decided to go in there and start shooting people one day. And he is the oldest spree killer in the books in American history at 71 years old. Yeah, that's crazy. (laughs) Yes. Um, And then in 2013, which is the most recent one, uh, Steve Parsons kills himself in court after being convicted of assaulting a 14 year old girl. So what? they put, they bring down his conviction and the jury comes back and he's guilty. He bites a cyanide tablet and kills himself right there in the courtroom. A coward. That's what I'm saying. So, um, they also have countless accounts of grisly mob justice type killings and beatings reported like all the time, obviously, because I read you the crime statistics. Those are actual FBI crime statistics of this county and of Skidmore. No wonder why nobody wants to live there. It's awful, awful place. Dude, what, what, um, what's the mafia doing in rural Missouri? Like, what are No, they it's like, it's, it's mob justice like killings like you wronged me so now i'm gonna kill you oh god gotcha. not saying that it is actually the mob oh, it's just like mob-like. Why, why is the mafia there that doesn't make sense <laughs> no they <laughs> have they have a lot of mob like um mob like mob justice type killings gotcha. like honor killings you know stuff like that um and and the beatings, you know what I mean? Like they're somebody's trying to shake somebody down, so they just go like break their yeah. kneecaps, you know, stuff like that. That's that's what I was saying is mob like justice. Um and so my question is, is there something sinister taking place in this town? Obviously in this county. It's the devil's playground. Right. And I and I wrote there must be with so much crime and so little population. 
Yeah, there's like barely any people there. Like the whole town must just be committing crimes. Right. This place is just awful. Um, the what well, the the weirdest part is is the residents here do not speak about any of it ever. Why the f not? Oh, they're worried about retaliation, probably. Huh? No, there's nobody to, who's going to retaliate against them. What? They're the ones committing all these crimes. <laughs> I guess I'm assuming like the innocent people, because I'm sure there's some innocent people somewhere. <laughs> Right. So, um, and, and too, if they, if you ask them specifically about, uh, the Ken Rex McElroy murder, right. they'll tell you, they'll tell, they'll tell you, go read the book, which is referring to in broad daylight by Harry M. McLean. I'm going to look that up. Yeah. I'll see if it's on audiobooks. So I can listen to it at work. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it is. But yeah, this place is insane. Um, those were just all the facts. I mean, that there's so many more, it's so much more stuff that happens. Like they have animal killings. Um, it's like huge farmland and like, <laughs> this is like an everyday occurrence here, I guess. It's That's weird. Crazy. I've never heard of a place like this before. <laughs> like... Me neither. I'm like, I don't even want to go. And, like, I've read reports, I've read reports of people who, they go through the town and people just stare at them as they're driving by. Like, not friendly at all. What? How do these these people live? Like, do they have a lot of shops there? No, actually, most of the stores and stuff are closed. Uh, They recently elected a mayor who lived there when when she was a girl and then um, moved away. And then came back like 30 years later and they elected her mayor. And she's now trying to clean up the town and like do like a beautification project with the town. She's going to get it. That's what I'm saying. I don't even know. But I mean, from certain accounts, they are trying to clean it up and make it a more livable place and bring people back and stuff. But with that kind of crime rate, like, that is literally the 2018 crime rate. (laughs) Yeah, that's not like that was 20 years ago or something. That was 2018. I don't even understand people. Like, why would you live in a place like that for real? (laughs) I wouldn't want to. No way. Nah. I thought you would like this place because it is just weird and these people are creepy and they do disturbing, awful things. Dude, and so weird. right like it I'm just is like weird. i can't i hate when i like hear things about people like things that happen to them but there's no reason why it's happening to them <laughs> like... right and i i don't know like this really is the creepiest town ever because there's no explanation for all this stuff well, yeah it's not like oh i was possessed can i tricked my wife to get under the combine <laughs> like dude it's seriously like children of the corn yes it's... or mid or midsummer have know. you ever seen that no okay midsummer is like this couple goes to this place they're on a vacation and like the whole town is like creeped out like they're all there's something wrong with all of them and they end up using this couple as a sacrifice in their midsummer like, like pagan ritual oh my goodness yeah and these people here are like that is that what's going that's on what it reminded here? me of it's like a satanic cult or something isn't it right i guess so but it's like a whole town listen that reminds me of the of the x-files episode where they go to that town with the chicken uh yes I know and they're all cannibal <laughs> <laughs> yep i remember i remember that uh, one but the whole town's in on it like yeah <laughs> yep that's what this is i love Obviously. i love the x-files by the way this I town should be an X-Files. x-files i wonder if they got this from the, this town <laughs> <laughs> they might have i don't know because i mean so much weird shit happens in this town like you would think like you think of a town with 250 people would be like mayberry 
You know what I mean? Yeah, like everybody, everybody knows everybody. Friendly. You help your neighbors. Yeah. It is not like everybody. that at all here. No, these people hate everybody, including each other. Each other, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's a good one. I better. Interesting. I wonder if the land is cursed or something. And the natives, they're like. I don't know. I mean, but it's like the whole county is like this. Um, which I did read, and it's like an incidental side note type thing that Missouri is actually the meth capital of the United States. <laughs> not just a town in Missouri, the whole state. I mean, that's is not like really meth surprising capital. to me. I guess. <laughs> well, they don't. I, I, well, see, my thing is, is like, okay, so maybe the meth capital, but their population in Missouri is so low. It's like Montana's population. Yeah. Like it's very unpop uh, unpopulated. Right. It has a lot of wild. It has a lot of wild areas. You know, a lot of it is farmland. Right. I can imagine, like St. Louis and Kansas City are the biggest cities. So, yeah, and you know, so, but I'm like, um, but I'm like, of course. So that it's more noticeable, I think, because it is so unpopulated. <laughs> right. So I don't necessarily know if that would be a true statement that it's the meth capital of. The United States because it's so unpopulated, you know. Well, yeah, but I'm like, if they have a lot of meth there, maybe that, <laughs> maybe it's right. Better. But it, I mean, it's just like a, it's an incidental side note. It has really nothing to do with Skidmore, Missouri itself, They're because all this on place. Meth. I mean, I'm telling you, this whole county is just messed up. It's not a very big county either, and um, when I was looking for hauntings in this county, like. Or I was actually looking for hauntings in Skidmore specifically. Yeah. And a lot of the outlying little towns that are still in uh, Nottoway County uh -huh. are, they have a lot of hauntings in those towns. That like, that are like 12 miles away and, you know, 18 miles and 20 miles and 30 miles. So they're, the outlying towns are, there's some like haunting shit going on in there. But I think because everybody is so closed mouth about Skidmore yeah. that they don't even report if they have hauntings there. Yeah, they're like... <laughs> or what is actually going on in this town because they don't say nothing about anything there. They're not talking about it. <laughs> yeah, they'll just be like, I wasn't there or I don't know anything about that. Dude, I'm That's tripping what out. they're about. I'm tripping out. Yeah, the Branson really gets me because... Like, everybody else, it's pretty obvious what happened to them. They were killed or whatever, but he just is gone. A little gunner. Right, or is this, like, a... I mean, by, I mean, he sounded like a good kid, you know what I mean? He was only 20 years old, but is it, like, another Ken Rex McElroy thing? Yeah. Where nobody, just nobody's going to talk about it, and he just vanished? Like, is that what, that's, what that is about, or... I mean, because... I, I can't even see that because that he was victimized himself. You know what I mean? Right. It wasn't like he was the one doing the right. crimes. I don't even know what to say, man. I don't either. It's weird. I'm this gonna, place is so weird. I'm going to go here one day. <laughs> no, you're not. I, I'm gonna, I don't want to go here. I'm going to. I don't want to go I'm here. I'm going to do it. <laughs> you want to go to any ghosty place you want to go to. I will not go here. I'm going here. I'm not going to this place. <laughs> I'm not. I'll just drive through. That's my plan. And your, G and your GPS is going to stop working. And you're not going to know how to get out of this damn place. Oh, God. I'll be stuck there forever. <laughs> right. I think I'll be okay. I'll take a map. I'll take a paper map. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. If, it, if it's even on the map, they might have just blotted this whole damn city out of the map. This yeah. whole damn town. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even exist. Oh lordy! Well, Tristan, yeah, that it, was a good one. It's strange. It's a strange town. It's super strange. And uh, if any of our listeners live here in Skidmore <laughs> or have been here, let us know because I am very interested. If anything weird happened to you, <laughs> were you stalked? Yeah. Were you stalked? Did someone try to kill you? <laughs> oh lordy! By their crime rate, I'm going to say it's a very good chance. Yeah. You were robbed or stalked or assaulted. 
A hundred and eight percent above national average in violent crimes. Violent crimes, crimes. yeah. That is absolutely. That is so ridiculous. It actually trips me out because they're what, like ninety? It was like ninety four percent or some or ninety eight or something above for just crime. Yeah, their total crime rate is ninety two percent above national average. Right, but their violent crime is a hundred and eight percent. Like, how do you even get like? I know, isn't that ridiculous? Like they, they choose to do violent and I, crimes. <laughs> and I specifically looked up this town. Right. Like it wasn't the county, it wasn't the the nearest big city. It was Skidmore, Skidmore, Missouri. Oh, that's was 108% above national average for violent crimes. Why? Yeah, why? What's going on there? I mean, What's because even Skidmore? if you even if you take the biggest cities like where you live and where I live or I mean I bet you LA's is lower than that. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I wonder interesting. I wonder if it's based on population though. I don't know. That's just so strange. I don't even know either. I mean but I mean they take it as a national average. So Right. But even by population, 108%, that means that 108% of the people are doing violent crimes there. Right, that's every person in the town. Plus eight. Plus their animals. (laughs) (laughs) My chicken robbed the guy. Violently. (laughs) My chicken pecked the shit out of that guy. I don't know, it was... It was weird. I don't know. This town is so weird. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And I'm going there. And that's my final word on that. And. If what, you... Sassy? Oh, she just looked like her is chugging her beer. Oh. Sassy, Sassy thought you were drinking. I wish I I have to work tomorrow. He told you to take it easy. Whoa. Dang. He said, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that 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 sparkling water gets me every time. She said that sparkling water gets her every time. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, the, so this town is weird. I don't know. I'm gonna. I I kind of want to delve some more into this because yeah, you I just couldn't find all that much information about it. You besides should, uh, what was reported in the news, you should look up some more about it. And if we have to do a second one, we will. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was going to be long because I have like eight pages worth of stuff. Yeah. But it was, it was just pretty quick because it's just all facts and it's laid out, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. No, I like it. So. And if you like it, listeners, make sure you go and um, like us and subscribe and turn on our notifications so you don't have to look around for our content. We'll just be there in your faces like badow. Yes, and follow us on your favorite podcast platforms, so that way you'll know when our new content comes out. We're everywhere, and if, I think that you can subscribe to us on podcasts, because I always hear like podcasters saying subscribe to me, and um, I do subscribe to a lot of podcasts, <laughs> so I think it helps I them. also, I also do too. I, I'm not sure how that works, because I have Spotify Premium, so I don't pay for anything besides Premium. Yeah. And, uh, so I can, I listen to all of them. I haven't had to, uh, buy any podcasts yet, so I'm not sure how that works. So I don't know about, I don't know if you have to buy podcasts necessarily, because I think in our last episode, I did mention that, um, there are podcasts where you have to pay a subscription fee. And I don't know if that would apply on Spotify. Do you know what I mean? Like it, right. if you already pay for Spotify, it might, I don't know. I don't use Spotify. I've never used Spotify. So I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's where we are. We're everywhere. Check us out. Listen to yes. us while you're driving down the road, maybe in a spooky place. Yes. Awesome. Um, and follow us on Facebook under Rebecca Tristan and um you can get us on twitter um under occultus cerebus at cerebus um and uh i don't know should i spell it out for them because some people may not know how to spell that it is a very 
Latin term. It is Latin. <laughs> I mean, if you if you want to spell it, otherwise, you know, there are links. I like to use links for everything. <laughs> so. Okay, yeah, so there is links. Um, and you guys can follow us on um, Instagram, occultist underscore cerebus. And uh, I post content daily on Instagram. And Tristan, if you haven't noticed, is in charge of Instagram. And I am in charge of Facebook. <laughs> And Twitter, where we have no followers. <laughs> I guess I need to get on that. <laughs> I'm just going to start harassing people I don't know. to follow us. I just, I just, because I do not have a personal Facebook account, and I'm not very good with Twitter. I do have a personal Twitter account, but I'm not very good with it. So, because I'm not exactly sure how it works. Yeah, well, we've talked about this before. I think Twitter is way more um, political. Yes. It's always been political since I've started using it, so... I don't expect to get a lot of followers on Twitter, but right. Uh, maybe I'll work on Facebook at the very least. Yes. You yes, will be Facebook following page. us on Facebook in a month. I guarantee it. Do I it. Care, I don't care who you are. And um, follow us on our YouTube channel, the pair of sisters, of course, subscribe, follow, share, like hit the notification bell, like, give us that or thumbs, dislike. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. All right, y'all. I guess we're going to end this. Um, excellent, excellent, excellent case today, Tristan. I really appreciated it. Thank you. I thought it was interesting. It was very interesting. And like I said, if anybody out there lives or has been to Skidmore, Missouri, please let us know. And uh, yes. you can leave those down in the comments. And um, I guess we're just going to end. And I'll say I'll catch you all on the flip side. And you all stay creepy. Peace.